Is it time to leave LastPass? Wireless keyboards can spy on you, a government agency finally gets two-factor authentication, and Android security notifications are now a thing. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morse and this is ThreatWire for August 2nd, 2016. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. If you haven't checked out our Patreon yet, please do so. We have a lot that we want to do for the show, but we can't do it without your support. Patreon.com slash ThreatWire is the place to support ThreatWire, and the link is in the show notes. So, is it time to leave LastPass? That is what many people are considering after last week's announcement of a zero-day vulnerability found in the LastPass app used on Firefox browsers. Google Project Zero security researcher Tavis Ormandi found the flaw in LastPass's app that would allow a complete remote compromise to a user's account. The hacker would need to get a user to visit a malicious website that hosts an exploit for it to work. Once the user goes to the site, the exploit would run executed commands through LastPass's app that the user would not see, and they would get all of the things. So both Ormandis and another vulnerability that was fixed over a year ago require phishing attacks to work and for somebody to go to an exploited website. The exploit has been patched in version 4.1.21a of the app, and it only affects Firefox users. LastPass awarded Ormandi a cash prize for his findings and the disclosure to the company. Now, if you are curious if your Firefox browser and the app have been updated with the patch, you can open Firefox, type about colon add-ons into the address bar, hit enter, and then click on extensions. From there, find LastPass, choose more, and then look at the title for the version number. If it says LastPass 3 dot something, you're probably fine if you aren't affected. If it says LastPass version 4 point something, you can click on the settings gear icon and then choose check for updates. And this will download any updates for the app if available. Now, the biggest concern for a lot of LastPass users, though, is the fact that LogMeIn's impending merger is going to happen with Citrix. See, LogMeIn purchased LastPass earlier this year, and while pricing and the service mostly stayed the same, it is a little bit questionable what will happen once Citrix actually acquires them. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. Earlier this year, Bastille, a security firm investigating wireless keyboards and mice, discovered that they could inject keystrokes into keyboards several hundred yards away. Now, last week, well, they kind of announced that they could read keystrokes too. Wired's Andy Greenberg had a great write-up called, quote, Radio Hack Steals Keystrokes from Millions of Wireless Keyboards that discusses how a $12 gadget can intercept the connection between any of eight wireless keyboards and a computer 250 feet away. And yes, this is different from Sammy Kankar's device. Now, the device manufacturers use generic alternatives to Bluetooth, like transceiver chips that save a whole lot of money, but they haven't gone through the rigorous testing that Bluetooth has for security procedures. They are literally sending keystrokes over the air in plain text, assuming that nobody's going to notice because it's some random radio device and nobody's going to be the wiser. Yeah, it turns out everybody is wise to this because they found this flaw. So the brands that are vulnerable to the key sniffer tool include HP, Toshiba, Radio Shack, Kensington, Insignia, General Electric, Anchor, and Eagle Tech three of which have released statements regarding the vulnerability for their users. Now, you might notice that Logitech's unifying wireless keyboards are not on that list. They are encrypted between the keyboard and the unifying receiver with 128-bit AES encryption. Now, while I hate using their proprietary connectors because I lose them all the time to make wireless anything work, I do have to say props to Logitech for making it encrypted, even if it is just 128-bit. I would love to see them increase that to 512 or 256. As a response to an executive order for federal agencies to better secure their users, the U.S. Social Security Administration is now using cell phone SMS messages as two-factor authentication for users that log into SSA.gov. This requirement will be necessary along with a username and a password, but it does not make it any harder for a new user to create an account. The security protocols to validate your identity when creating an account are still the exact same. Now, since it's pretty cheap for a hacker to buy your data, it's like three or four dollars and use it to sign up on SSA.gov, it is still very recommended to freeze your credit report, block your SSN from being accessible online, or to just sign up on the site so that nobody else can beat you to it because you can only have one SSN on 
per account on that website. No more than one account can use the same exact SSN. But with this announcement also comes a message from the US National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST for short. They quote, due to the risk that SMS messages may be intercepted or redirected, implementers of new systems should carefully consider alternative authenticators. Yeah, so NIST is basically recommending not using SMS because yes, it can be hacked, and they want you to use something else instead, like biometrics to authenticate with two-factor authentication. Google just announced a new Android feature allowing you to receive a security update directly to your phone as a notification instead of just receiving an email. The app is dismissible just like any other, so if you expect to be notified that you added a new device to your account, you can just remove the notification, swipe left or right. Google found that a user is four times likelier to check a security notification via a pop-up on their phone as opposed to an email. That's huge! So now you will know automatically and very quickly on your smartphone if somebody else is trying to log into your account on a different device. That's pretty cool, Google. Thank you! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, to all those fine people out there, you know who you are, who contribute to patreon.com slash threatwire. You brought this show back to life, and you are the reason that we can keep on bringing you news every single week, and I love bringing you news, so please, let me do it. Any little bit helps us grow the show, and in return, we will build an RSS for you, and when we reach our next goal, we're gonna bring on another episode every single week. We might even feature your fur baby in an upcoming episode. I love seeing the cats and dogs. They're awesome. Check out the perk levels if you want to contribute your own fur baby to the show on Patreon. And thanks again for helping us keep this coming completely independent and completely ad-free. If you can't donate, hit the subscribe button. It's down there somewhere. Or you can share this episode on your favorite social media page and use hashtag ThreatWire so that we can see it and we can retweet you. With that, I am Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.